Welcome back to London, the city of red double-decker buses, black taxis and historic buildings. For some time now, however, London is also known for something else. It's futuristic skyscrapers. Every few years, huge new buildings spring up here, permanently changing the city's skyline. Like this one, for example, the so-called Walkie Talkie building in the city's historic financial district. It is 160 meters high, has 38 floors and looks a bit special. The design is so strangely curved that it looks like an old Walkie Talkie device. You can like it or not. But that's not the only thing that makes this building so special. Because there is something not quite right with this skyscraper on Fenchurch Street. I'll try to explain the problem to you. For that, let's jump back to the year 2013, a few years after this skyscraper was completed. The heating and air conditioning engineer, Eddie Cannon, drives his craftsman van through the financial district in London on a normal weekday in late summer. He has an errand to do nearby and parks his van on the side of the road not far from the new skyscraper. A few hours later, he comes back to his vehicle and he can't believe his eyes. The interior of the van is completely bent, warped and destroyed. The van looks a complete mess, Cannon tells the newspaper Daily Mail. The dashboard is completely damaged and so are things that the craftsman had stored in his vehicle, such as a drinking bottle. And no one can really explain how this could have happened. Only one thing is clear, in the following days the strange incidents around the new skyscraper increase. For example, there is a man named Martin Lindsay. He parks his luxury car, a Jaguar XJ, also near this new building. When he later returns to his parking space, all the plastic parts of his car are completely warped and big dents can be seen in the side mirrors of the luxury car. Over time, the unusual incidents don't just affect cars. Bicycle seats suddenly peel off, doormats in front of the surrounding restaurants suddenly catch fire and even floor tiles on the sidewalks are completely destroyed from one day to the next for no apparent reason. The British tabloid press quickly jumps on the subject and identifies a culprit. There seems to be something wrong with the new walkie-talkie building and from that day on the new skyscraper with its unusual design is the talk of the town for several weeks. Well, and at this point you probably ask yourself, what kind of weird story is that again? What does a skyscraper have to do with damage to cars or burning doormats and how the heck did that happen? Well, let me explain. This is the exciting story of London's mysterious walkie-talkie building. Before I tell you more about the myth behind this walkie-talkie building, let me tell you what kind of building this actually is. Because when it was built, it already caused all sorts of discussions here in London. The construction on the walkie-talkie house begins in 2011 and in the following years it will cost 200 million pounds. The skyscraper is originally supposed to be 200 meters high, 40 meters higher than today, but the plans are later scrapped because it is feared that the nearby St. Paul's Cathedral and the Tower of London could suffer. Even when the building permit is granted, there are always discussions about this unusual house. All sorts of groups are voicing their concerns. In 2007, however, the construction is finally approved. In 2014, it's finally completed. The walkie-talkie building is rented to various insurance companies today and IT companies also have the headquarters here. Meanwhile, its owner, the Land Securities Group, is less lucky. In 2016, just a year after 
after the walkie talkie house opened, demand for real estate in London collapses due to Brexit, the company reports a loss of 95 million pounds. Just a year later, the company sells the walkie talkie building. The new owner since then is the Lee Kam Kee Group, a food company from Hong Kong. The architect of this interesting building is a man called Rafael Vignoli. He was born in Uruguay and he died last year in New York. He is considered one of the most important representatives of modern architecture, but he also built a lot of controversial stuff in recent years. Vignoli gained international fame with the International Forum in Tokyo, which opened in 1997. The architect was always known for his futuristic design during his lifetime. His buildings were always imposing steel structures with large equal glass surfaces. The architect's most famous buildings include skyscrapers such as 432 Park Avenue in New York, the Cleveland Museum of Art, Caresco International Airport in Uruguay and well, the walkie-talkie building, one of his last buildings. The special features on this house are, on the one hand, its curvy geometry. The building becomes wider towards the top. On the other hand, there is also the impressive sky garden, which extends over the top three floors. Vignoli once described it as the highest public park in London. Apart from this special feature, however, the design of the building is not very well received by Londoners and architecture experts. In 2015, the walkie-talkie skyscraper even received the Carbunkel Cup, a negative prize from the architecture magazine Building Design, which is awarded annually for the ugliest building in the United Kingdom. The British newspaper Guardian wrote about it. The walkie-talkie house is on a site that was never intended for a tall building. It looms thuggishly over its low-rise neighbors like a broad-shouldered banker in a cheap pinstriped suit and it gets fatter as it rises to make bigger floors at the more lucrative upper levels. Well, but the look of this building right behind me is not its only problem. And that's also the story I just teased. Just a few days after this skyscraper was completed, unusual things started to happen in this neighborhood. Bicycle seats, floor mats and even cars were totally destroyed or to be more precise, they melted. The reason for the disaster is the curved south facade of the building. It reflects and focuses the sun's rays like a magnifying glass. At the beginning of September 2013, at lunchtime, the sidewalk on the neighboring street becomes brightly lit, meter by meter and sweltering hot. So hot that objects in the street gradually start to break. For experts, the construction of the building is to blame for this effect. On the one hand, because the building is arched upwards. Such a construction method is still relatively new and has not been possible for very long. On the other hand, highly reflective glass is used in the construction of the building. The reason for that is that the rooms in the building should not be heated up so much by the sunlight. The glass serves as a kind of sunglasses for interiors. Unfortunately, not so for everything that stands under this building. After the first incidents with completely deformed cars and dashboards, charred floor mats and broken floor panels, the British tabloid media writes about a, quote, death ray emanating from the building. Reporters of television channels start frying eggs in pens in the street and, hard to believe, it actually works. A reporter later writes on Twitter that he had almost singed his hair in the attempt down the street. Of course, the city of London reacts. Parking spaces on the street are temporarily closed so that no more cars are damaged. The builders of the walkie-talkie also put up black nets to protect the restaurants in the area and their doormats. The Jaguar owner with his damaged car is also immediately compensated by the owners of the walkie-talkie. They want to prevent any damage to their image by any means possible. The company is also trying to appease the residents. The burning glass effect is a problem that only lasts two or three weeks, they say. As soon as the sun is lower according to the season and the rays hit the high-rise facade at a different angle, the problem should be solved. 
Well, and after this whole disaster, of course, also the architect, Rafael Vignoli, is being criticized. This time, not just because of his unusual design choice, this time also because of his death ray. What did he actually say about all this? Well, Vignoli puts the blame on the builders. Originally, for the south side of the building, horizontal slats were planned as sun protection, says the architect during a crisis visit to the site. They were probably not installed for cost reasons. There are simply too many building developers and consulting firms in London, and design is playing an increasingly subordinate role in the many meetings he criticizes. The architect also tells The Guardian that he He did not have the right techniques to calculate the heat generated through the glass surfaces of the high-rise building. He expected it to be 36 degrees, but it actually got up to 72 degrees. And Vignoli also identifies another culprit, climate change. The developers didn't take the position of the sun into account enough, he says. However, when he came to London years ago, it wasn't that sunny either. Now you have all these sunny days, so you should blame this thing on global warming too, right? Says the architect. However, Vignoli also admits, we made a lot of mistakes with this building and we will take care of it. The curious thing about this whole death ray disaster in London is, it's not the only case of its kind. Just a few years earlier, Rafael Vignoli designed a building in Las Vegas with very similar consequences. In 2008, the authorities also discovered a burning glass effect here. Guests at the surrounding hotel pools suddenly burned their feet when they tried to put on their flip-flops. Others reported singed hair. On other days, bar beverage containers or packaging melted. The hotel management eventually installed large blue umbrellas at the pool area to protect hotel guests. And also in London, this problem luckily is solved today. One year after this skyscraper was built, they equipped this building, this facade you can see right behind me, with sun protection slats. Since that day, this building no longer dazzles and you can also park your Jaguar again in those streets right here. However, this doesn't mean that this building no longer causes problems. In addition to solar radiation, also wind has been a problem since this high-rise building was built. In 2015, media reported that complaints from residents had increased since the walkie-talkie was built. The wind under high-rise buildings is not an entirely unusual phenomenon. It has to do with the so-called downdraught effect. The wind hits the building and is then pushed downward, increasing the wind speed on the street. In case of the walkie-talkie, several people were said to have been knocked over by a gust of wind at the foot of the building, as media reported. Nada Pira Deepen, an expert on wind properties at engineering consultancy firm Wintech, said The downdraught effect is most strong where buildings stand face on to the prevailing wind, which in London is from the southwest. More rounded buildings don't have quite the same downdraught effect and don't encourage an increase in wind speed around them as the air doesn't accelerate around corners. The design of the walkie-talkie, however, seems to favor the wind effect. The City of London's head of design, Wynne Richard, later admits, the wind outcome at street level experienced post-construction on a number of projects differs somewhat from the conditions we were expecting from the one outlined in the planning application wind assessments. This whole fuss over the walkie-talkie building of course also hurt Rafael Vignoli. People said after this incident that he finally ruined all of his reputation as an architect, something that Rafael Vignoli also took to his grave. On March 2nd, 2023, he died of an aneurysm. However, Vignoli still has the opportunity, at least posthumously, to create a suitable memorial for himself and his work. In recent years, some of his last designs have been completed, so far without any major complaints, and another one is still being planned. 
The National Medal of Honor Museum is scheduled to open in Texas in the USA in 2025, also based on a design by Rafael Vignoli. Once again, a very futuristic building. Once again, opinions may differ on the design. Let's hope that at least this time, cars, floor panels and floor mats remain intact. Here we are back in the hotel. That was my story about the mysterious London skyscraper, the walkie talkie building. If you liked the story, if you learned something, then please leave a thumbs up. You can also hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you won't miss any upcoming video. And if you'd like to support me and my work, you can also do that, for example, on Patreon. The link is in the description down below. Or you can become a channel member on my YouTube channel. Then you will also get exclusive stuff and new videos before everyone else. So you should check that out. That was not my last video from London. I'm back in two weeks with another shooting location tour from this beautiful city. So we see each other back in two weeks. That's it for today. Have a safe journey. See you next time. <laughs>